The classic Hollywood movies channel from Comedy MX features golden era films remastered from the Festival Films Library. Festival Films was founded in 1976 by Ron Hall. Check out his public domain collection at festfilms.com, F-E-S films.com. But while you are here, binge the night away from horror to comedy, from film noir to musicals, and from war to westerns. The thrills and chills never stop at Comedy MX. So return with us now to those golden days of yesteryear. What are you doing in there at this time of night? Well, I, uh, you see, uh, my Aunt Katie's buried in there, and I was just... Uh, you just what? Well, I was just in there. Yeah, I know that, but what were you doing in there? It's a long story, Sergeant. All right, then start telling it. And never mind promoting me. It all started about promoting you. What do you mean, promoting you? Well, not a sergeant. No? No, I haven't been on the force long enough. Well, how long have you been on? Well, let me see now. It'll be four years in September, I think. Or is it October? I'm not sure. Hey, what's that got to do with it? Uh, with what? With you being in there. Oh, I nothing. Why? Come on, now let's start all over again. What were you doing in there at this time of night? I was merely following instructions. Instructions? Yes, I just left a thousand dollars on Aunt Katie's grave. Thousand dollars? Yes. What for? Well, because that's what he told me to do. What? Who told you to do? The man that wrote the letter. What letter? The letter demanding a thousand dollars. Hey, look, mister, one of us is just a little crazy. I know I was all right when I left the station. You don't believe me? That's putting it a bit mildly. Well, all right, go on in and see for yourself. I gotta get home. Wait a minute, just a minute. Hey, Lou, come here. There it is, right there. That's some of your work? What? That portrait. Yes, but it doesn't do her justice. Really, it doesn't. Why, she was the best cook in the world. You should have tasted her pancakes. They just melt in your mouth. And her pineapple upside down All cake. right, all right. Let's get back to the $1,000. Hmm? Oh. Uh, there's the wallet. Just before I climbed over the wall, I looked back and I saw a figure glide out of the shadows over there. 
pick up the wallet, take out the money, drop the wallet, and disappear in that direction. See if we can find any footprints over there, Lou. Oh, here are some. What's your foot in that? I guess they're mine. Yeah, funny, ain't it? Is that a sign over on this side? Oh, that doesn't surprise me. No? No, you see, he didn't walk. He just seemed to glide. Oh, he did, huh? Oh, well, yes. Well, suppose you and me and Lou just glide down to headquarters. Headquarters? Yeah. Well, I haven't any business at headquarters. Yeah, well, you didn't have any business in here either. Come now, on. now, wait a minute. Yeah, Leave right. officer, wait a Joe Morgan, alias Joe the Lug, alias Dippy Joe, alias Chain Store Morgan. Four arrests, four convictions, suspicion of robbery of Acme Drugstore, Yonkers, September the 5th. I was in St. Louis. Suspicion of robbery of Acme Drugstore, Brooklyn, September the 12th. I was in St. Louis. Suspicion of robbery of Acme Drugstore, Astoria, September the 19th. I was in St. Louis. Suspicion of robbery of Acme Drugstore, St. Louis. Huh? September the 26th. I was in Chicago. Step down. All right, next. Stand there. They got their hat. Everett P. Digberry. No previous record. Suspicion of robbery. Suspicion of robbery? Well, I'm the one that was robbed. Quiet. I will not be quiet. I'm a respectable citizen. I pay my taxes. I've got two nephews in the Navy. And I'm buying a government bond every month. And these lights are blinding. <laughs> and it's not a bit funny. Quiet, I said. And I said I won't be quiet. Okay, Flanagan, hold it. What's all this about? At one o'clock this morning, he was picked up, sneaking out of St. Margaret's Cemetery. Well, what are you doing there? What were you doing there? What were you doing there? That's all I've heard since one o'clock this morning. And I'm getting sick and tired of answering. And besides, who are you and what business is it of yours? Um, answer the question. I will not. Answer the question! No. Not till you come out here where I can see you. What will I do with him, Cap? I'll let him alone. Wait a minute. Well, that's better. Is it? Yes, now, if you'd just take these lights out of my eyes, everything would be fine. You wouldn't care for a cup of tea or something, would you? Oh, no, thank you. I only drink tea at night. I wouldn't drink it then. Only coffee keeps me awake. What kept you awake until one o'clock this morning? I had to put the money on Aunt Katie's grave, as the letter said. That's what letter said? The Black Panther's letter. The Black Panther? Well, yes. Did you get one of those letters, too? Two? What do you mean, two? Did you get one? Give me the commissioner. The fact that none of you has received any further threats seems to indicate that this is just another one of those unfunny jokes by some nitwit. I don't think you need worry. However, if you should receive any further threats, I want you to communicate with this office at once. Is that understood? Excuse me, commissioner. It's Captain Flynn. Something new in the Panther case. Pardon me. Yes, Flynn? When? All right, bring him right up. Our little Panther Club has a new member. In fact, I think we should make him president. It's already cost him money. This puts a new slant on the case, which is very interesting. There might be something to it after all. Come on. Commissioner's busy, Mike. It's all right, he's expecting us. Here he is, Commissioner, and you're welcome to him. Everett. Deepberry. Hello. Well, this is a relief. I haven't seen anything but blue uniforms since one o'clock this morning. Why, Everett, you did not tell me you were mixed up in this. Well, no, I didn't tell anybody. That is, not till this morning. Since then, that's all I've been doing, telling it to the cops. Now I suppose I'll have to tell it all over again to the commissioner. My name is Everett P. Digberry. I'm a wig maker. I got a letter from the Panther demanding a thousand dollars. I paid it, got arrested, and here I am. And I want to go home. I'm Commissioner Colt. How do you do? I... What? I 
said I'm Commissioner Cole. Oh. My name is Everett P. Digberry. I'm a wig maker. I got a letter. Yes, yes, I know. Where is the letter? Oh, I haven't it with me. It's at my apartment. Is it anything like this? Mm -hmm. Just exactly, even to the panther's claw. Only on mine, it was in the other corner. When did you get it? About two weeks ago. Why didn't you notify the police? Because it said not to. You see, right there. And then it said to wait for further instruction. Did you receive them? Why, yes, three days ago. My phone rang at four o'clock in the morning. I'm Commissioner Cole, do you mind? Oh. My phone rang at four o'clock in the morning. Woke me out of a sound sleep and a very gruff voice, way down here. Told me to get $1,000 in small bills and go to the cemetery Sunday. Uh, I have three aunts buried there, Aunt Lizzie, Aunt Gussie, Aunt Kate. And I was to put the money on the middle grave. That was Aunt Kate. Why did you do all that without consulting the police? Well, Commissioner, I have a wife and five daughters. Luckily, they're up in Maine visiting my wife's brother, Charlie. Otherwise, I'd have six nervous breakdowns on my hands. So I thought the simplest thing to do was to pay it and get it over with before they got back. You see, I'm expecting them the end of the week. Can you afford to throw away that much money? Well, no. But I'd sooner do it than have six hysterical women on my hands. Have you ever tried handling six hysterical women with one of them weighing 180 pounds? Well, frankly, no. Well, I did once when our little Pekingese dog was lost. And I don't want any more of it. No, not for $5,000. Yeah, I can understand that. Who made the arrest? Murphy and Lubinsky. Get me a copy of their report. Yes, sir. What bank did you draw the money from? The Yonkers Savings Bank. I live up there. Only my house is closed right now while the family's away. I'm staying at a little apartment on 64th Street. Bring in your bank book. Yes, sir. Uh, can I go home now? Oh, not yet. Uh, do you mind? I understand that several of you are personally acquainted with Mr. Digbury. Oh, yes. I've known Everett for several years. He makes all my stage wigs. He also makes uh, several things for me, beards and mustaches and so forth. Yes, as, uh, as Madame Pulitzer's manager, I naturally had dealings with him. Then all six of you who have received these letters are connected in one way or another with the opera company. Is that right? Well, yes, yes, I understand that. And it's a natural deduction that the writer of the letter is also connected with the opera company, or at least familiar with it. Now, is there someone who might have a grudge against any or all of you? No. I can't think of anyone. I, I don't think I have any enemies. Hey, how about that crazy baritone that gave you so much trouble that you had to fire? Oh, you mean Lombardi? Yes, that's him. Yes, he's crazy enough, all right, to do a thing like this. Now that you mention him, I've had a little trouble with him. Yes, he is a trifle over-romantic. As a matter of fact, I had to throw him out of Madame's dressing room twice. He might have resented my taking his place. I see. Did you ever make any wigs for this, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lombardi. Lombardi? Why, no. He always did business with a second-rate wig maker named Wilkins. And believe me, his wigs look terrible. But where is this Lombardi now? Has anyone seen him lately? I saw him only last week. He looked pretty broke. He had dinner to ask me for five dollars. He has phoned my apartment several times when I was out. Come to think of it, he is about the same height and weight as the man who took the money in the cemetery. Have this Lombardi picked up. Right. What's his first name? Enrico. Enrico, thanks. I won't detain you any longer. Oh, uh, can all of this be kept quiet, Commissioner? At least my part in it? You know, the wife and daughters and hysterics. I can't promise. It will be all right for me to leave town, yes? You see, at the close of the opera season, I always go away. I had planned to sail to South America tomorrow. Tomorrow? I'll be here, Commissioner, to uh, represent Madame if anything further develops concerning her. Well, in that case, it'll be all right. Oh, thank you, Commissioner. You're quite welcome, Madame. Good day. Bye. I want the rest of you to be available if I should need you. Certainly, sir. Gentlemen. We miss you. Good day, gentlemen. Oh, we miss you. Buongiorno. Goodbye. You want to speak to me about something? Oh, no. Just a minute. Now, am I going to have some more trouble with you? 
Let him go, Flynn. Yes, sir. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Digbell. Anything else, Commissioner? Yes, I want to see you a minute. All right, sir. Now, Tony, these letters were obviously written on the same typewriter. You notice how the H is out of line. Judging by the spacing, the writer used the hunt and peck system. It's a very ordinary brand of paper. No watermarks. It's going to be very difficult to trace. From the looks of the type, I judge it was written on a portable typewriter. I think you're right. So all we have to do is to find someone who's got a portable typewriter with the H out of line, $1,000 in small bills in his pocket, and a pet panther with ink on its feet. <laughs> That's about it. Flynn, get the boys busy on these. Have the paper reduced its chemical formula and contact the manufacturers. Yes, sir. Detective Bureau. Hello? Abbott speaking. The commissioner wants a guy named Enrico Lombardi brought in. Yeah. Used to be with the New York Opera Company. You can probably get a line on him at the Opera House. Yes. Yes, that's all. You know, you'd never think it to look at Big Barry, would you, Tony? Think what? That he had a 180-pound wife and five daughters. Hello, Homer. Did you smell that bacon cooking all the way upstairs? Well, if that mistress of yours ever gets with me feeding you, it'll be just too bad for both of us. A few things to attend to before the vote leaves, but I'll be back in time to take it to the pier. Don't bother. Everett will be here, and I shall go with him. Meet you there. I don't know whether I'll be able to stay until the boat leaves, as I have an important appointment at nine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'll be all right to Edgar. Well, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. And, uh... There you are. You may send up for Madame's bags in about half an hour. Yes, sir. I hope everything has been satisfactory. And we're looking forward to having Madame with us again next season. I think you will. She's been more than satisfied with everything. Thank you, sir. meaning of this. That's the most ridiculous thing I ever hear. Lombardi may be sometimes as a good temperamental. He may drink a little vino, he may fight, he may kill, but never is he a crook. Well... And who say Lombardi do it? Well, uh, you see, uh, Mr. Dickberry, the man who lost the money, nearly said he saw someone resembling you pick it up. Dickberry? Dickberry? I don't know this is Dickberry. How can I write to him a letter? Well, you see, I really have no... Now, why should I threaten you? Lombardi no threaten the women, he love them. And especially you, my beautiful one. Mm. Always I have a love of you. Now, Enrico, we have been through all this before. Yes, I know, and I'm going to keep on adoring you until you'll believe me. Mm, please, Enrico, please. Please, Enrico, please. Always, please, Enrico, please. Well, Enrico, don't please, you hear me? I love you. I love you. Come in. Hello, Nina. Oh. 
hope I'm not intruding. Oh, no, not... Yes, you are intruding. And who is you? My name is Digberry. 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 So you are the one. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Digberry? How do you do? <laughs> and you have to chuck the life out of you, you liar, you. On the count, you lobotious as ever in newspaper, a crook. Four hours to stay in the police station. Answer a thousand questions about something we should know nothing about. Let me go. I let you go. Enrico! Oh. Enrico! Enrico! Let him go. You're joking me. You. I did you to lie a bottle of body. Uh. Everett! Everett! Are you hurt? Everett! Oh, that's it. Mm. Everett! You! Get out of here. Or I'll call the police. Now get out of here. You're even more beautiful than ever when you're mad. You! Don't you dare strike her! Oh! You! Hello. Get me the police. Hello. And no forget, Lombardi love you. And if he can't have you, nobody else will. Homer, I could tell you something that'll make your eyes pop out. You'd never guess it in your life. No, not in all nine of them. It's about her, too. Now what have I done? Commissioner sent me up for your bank book. Oh, is that all? Well, come on in. Oh, yes, the bank book. The uh, bank book. Now, oh, let me see. Where did I put that? Where did I leave that? Funny, it should be right here. my head if it wasn't tied on to me. Oh, uh, sit down, Sergeant. Uh, oh, you're not a sergeant, are you? I forgot. Well, sit down anyway. Here we are. What do you think of that? It was still in my coat pocket. Well, thanks. Oh, uh, has the commissioner any idea who the panther is yet? No, I wouldn't know. Oh, you wouldn't, huh? No, he doesn't tell me everything. Oh, I see. Uh, hey, perhaps you'd like a receipt for this. Oh, no, that's all right. No, I think you better. Let's type it out and I'll sign it. Well, if you say so. Uh, what's the number of that book? 174609. Thanks. 174609. I use the hunt and peg system. There you are. Is that all right? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, thanks. Well, that'll take care of that. That's fine. 
Oh, so long. Oh, goodbye. That's not my pen. Officer. Officer. Certainly is an absent-minded fellow. Now, uh, wait a minute. Did he give me a receipt or did I give him one? Oh, this is very confusing. Homer, where are you? What have you been doing? My, my, what a mess, what a mess. Wait till I get hold of you. Wedgwood Arms. Mr. Digbury? Just a moment, please. Oh, fiddle dee. Hello. Yes, this is Digbury. Huh? What's it about? Uh-huh. Say, who's this talking? Say, but I don't... But what's that got... All right, I'll be there. Thirty-eighth Street and Eighth Avenue. I don't know anyone at Thirty-eighth Street and Eighth Avenue. I thought you said he was in. No, sir, Captain. I just said he didn't go out. You got a key for this? Yes, sir. Open it, then. Yes, sir. I mean. There they are. If that ain't the panther, I'll leave my hat. Tony, copy one of those panther letters on that machine over there. Right. Fit exactly, Tony. I want to check on that H. Right. All right, all right. Hold your horses. I'm coming. Does it? That's just about it. Murphy, see if you can find the panther. Yes, sir. Here, puss, 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 puss. Here, puss, 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 puss. Here, puss, 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 puss. Here, puss! Why, Mr. Digberry, I thought you was going out. Yes, I am. I know what they were. All right, Nicodemus, I'll see you when I come back. I'm late. Now. 
That's perfect. Thanks, pal. All right, Tony. Bring the typewriter and don't forget that ink pad. Well, if I had a few more hands. Well, I'll take the ink pad. Oh, that's a big help. <laughs> All right, give me the panther. Murphy, you wait here till Digbury comes. Okay, Commissioner. Ready, Tony? Right. Let's go. You know, there's some mighty curious things going on around here, Platoon. What kind of thing? I don't know, but I was upstairs in the... There was cops in his room, but he don't know it. Talk on a man can't even hold a secret discussion. I'll be right back and tell you all about it. Come on, Digberry, come on. You, you know they flashed the badges? One of them had a gold badge, solid gold. It, and they made me open the door to Mr. Digberry's apartment. Ah, uh, Mr. Digberry, uh, Mr. Digberry, did you know that the... Do you know he sure is acting funny tonight? But wait till he find them coppers up there. I've got to tell you, just wait, I'll be back, yeah? Here, Tony. You hold this panther. I'm getting full of hair and ink. <laughs> Give me a panther. What do you think is behind it all, Commissioner? Well, I'm not quite sure. There's no question but that Digberry wrote the letters and that he drew $1,000 out of the bank. The bank book shows that. How about that cemetery part? It's always sounded fishy to me. I don't believe it. He probably intended to shake down the others after he'd established himself as a victim to divert suspicion. Well, he didn't do a bad job for an amateur. Bad at all. I'll admit he fooled me. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mr. Digberry. Good evening. Digberry sure has got something on his mind tonight. He ain't been doing nothing but popping in and out of here all the evening. Seems every time I look up, he's either going out or coming in. He has been acting kind of strange. Yeah, but wait till he get upstairs. That's all. Oh, what's getting into me? Come back for your pen? Nope. For you. Huh? The commissioner wants to see you. Tonight? Right now. Let's go. All right. Dear, dear, what a day, what a day. The show is mighty funny, Mr. Stevens. Come again. Is he arrested? That ain't Santa Claus walking alongside of him. <laughs> Using the United States Post Office for the purpose of blackmail is a federal offense, Mr. Bigberry. But, Mr. Colt, I didn't blackmail anyone. Really, I didn't. You've admitted writing the letters. Yes. That's blackmail. But I didn't intend to ever go any further with it. I, I just wanted an alibi for something. Alibi? Yes. For what? Well, you know about my wife and five daughters. Yes, 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 I know all about them. Well, they're coming home soon. I know all about that, too. What's I, that got to do with it? I had to cover up that thousand dollars that I drew out of our joint savings account while they were gone. So, 
So you blackmailed yourself out of it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's really no laughing matter. You don't know my wife. What did you do with the money? Uh, I loaned it to a friend. Who? I'd really rather not say. It doesn't matter, does it? No. Habit speaking. Who? Oh, just a minute. Commissioner. Flynn. Yes, Flynn. Where? West 64th Street. Yeah, the words were Dom's. She had gray hair and was about 30 years old, I guess. Been dead about an hour. And then going through the place, what do you think they found? There's a picture of our friend Digberry. Who? Digberry. And it was signed, affectionately yours, Everett. I see. All right, Flynn, I'll be right over. Do you know anyone intimately at the Wedgwood Arms Department? Hmm? Why, no, no. I, I've just lived there since my family went away. I just go in, out. Did you ever visit any of the other apartments? No, 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 I can't say that I do. I see. All right, Murphy. Keep Mr. Digberry amused till I get back. Tony. Mrs. Nora Pelton. She's only been here a short time. Kept to her rooms quite a lot. She haven't? Well, several nights ago, a man called on her. Said he was her husband. They had a terrific row. Some of the tenants complained of the noise, and I had to threaten to call the police. I see. Is she friendly with any of the other tenants here? No, with the exception of Mr. Degberry. She was very friendly with him. In fact, he was the one who engaged this apartment for her. And uh, this is his picture? That's him, all right. Shot in the left temple. Close range powder burns on her head. Said about an hour. Want to have a look at it before we move her? Oh, yeah. Here's the bullet, Commissioner. Looks like a 32. Yeah. Where'd you find it? Right here in the safe. Probably seated in this chair, fits forward on the floor where those stains are, and then carried to that couch. Murderer crept in through this door, hid behind this chair. Would have to be left-handed for that. Left-handed? Yes, try standing behind that chair where you can't be seen and touch the left temple with your right hand. I'll buy that. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. Nina Polizza. Well, that's one on me. Yeah, she must have been in an awful hurry to get back to that gin rummy game. I thought she went to South America. So did everyone else but Digberry. Watch stopped at 810. That establishes the time of the murder. Take care of that, Tony. All right, Coroner. Come on, Tony. Did 
Jim? Yes, sir. I want Nina Polizzi's husband located and brought in. Also a manager, Walters, and that uh, Lombardi character. Yes, sir. Is Big Barry still in there? No, he went out for a cup of coffee or tea, I think it was. Oh, he did. Murphy with him? Sure. Murphy probably needed the tea. Well, send him in when they get back. Yes, sir. You don't think Digbury did it, do you? Candidly, no. Is he right or left-handed, did you notice? No, I can't say I did. Well, get me the ballistic report on this bullet. Let me know if the boys turned up any fingerprints. Let me know as soon as you can. Right. Well, Mr. Digbury, the commissioner wants to see you right away. Oh, he does, huh? Yeah. Come in. It's apartment 211, will you? I don't know. Wedgwood Arms? It's on 64th Street. Oh. So you found her already, huh? Yes. We just came from her. And I thought I was so clever. Why, even her manager didn't know she got off the boat just before it sailed. Oh, well, that's too bad. Now I bet it'll be in all the papers. Doesn't she look different in a gray wig? That's my work. I made that for her. When did you see her last? Only this evening. I drop in every day. What time this evening? About 6.30, I think it was. Anyone else there? No. What was she doing? She was sitting in an armchair by the door, reading. She didn't even hear me come in. Yeah. She's a little hard of hearing. She won't admit it, but she is. Opera singer, a little hard of hearing. Huh? <laughs> How long did you stay? Just a few minutes. Till after seven? No. Sure? Uh, certainly. I was at the corner of 38th Street and 8th Avenue just at seven. What were you doing there? I wasn't doing anything, just waiting. Waiting for what? Well, I don't quite know. You see, uh, about six o'clock, I think it was, my phone rang and someone I didn't recognize the voice told me to be at the corner of 38th Street and 8th Avenue at exactly seven o'clock. He said it was something about Madame Felitza and it was very important that I be there. So I went. What was it? It wasn't anything. Nobody showed up to tell me, so after waiting about 15 minutes, I went home. Did you see Madame Felitza when you got back to the apartment? No, I didn't see her. You can ask Madame Felitza. I went straight to my apartment, and there was Murphy, and we came here, and here I am. This sounds like a third degree in one of those movie whodunits, doesn't it? Mr. Digbury, you're either very clever, a victim of circumstance, or just plain crazy. What do you mean by that, Commissioner? Madame Felitza is dead. Dead? Nina dead? Found dead tonight, shot through the head. No. No! It, it can't be. Who would do such a thing and why? That's what I intend to find out. You want a gun? Certainly. Do you know of anyone who might have threatened Madame Felice? I don't... Oh, yes. That fellow Lombardi. And she once told me her ex-husband had. What's the color of her husband's hair? Uh, gray. Uh, about the same shade as mine. About like this? Yes. That's real hair, isn't it? Yes, but it's out of a wig. I thought so. But how do you know? By the tiny knot at the end. Well, that's that. It's probably out of her own wig. 
And no, sir, I made this wig. There's no such cheap hair as that in it. And it looks like it was made by that faker Wilkins. How can you tell? Right. By the knot, one wig maker can usually tell another's knot. Yes? Madame Felitz's ex-husband left for California at 8.30 tonight. 8.30? Yes, sir. No report on Lombardi yet. Have that husband picked up and brought back immediately. Yes, sir. Well, Digberry, we have work to do. If the district attorney were here, he'd probably want you held without bail. But since he isn't here, and if you promise me you will not leave the city, I'm going to let you go home. Thank you. If there's anything I can you may do... be sure I'll call on you at once. Good night. Good night. I'm afraid you'll have to cancel your engagement for tonight, Tony. We have work to do. It's no surprise to me. I haven't been able to keep a date in months. <laughs> well, you're in the Army. Looks as though the 40-hour week doesn't mean a thing to Mr. Wilkins. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Welcome to the oldest, most reliable wig shop in the United States. What can I do for you? This is Commissioner Cole. Oh, I want some information. Yes, sir. Have you made any gray wigs lately? Yes, sir. Maybe a couple, I think. Well, for whom? Well, I'll have to look in my book. Oh, just a minute. Do you know a wig maker named Digberry? Yeah. Ah, uh, that faker. Seems to be a little professional jealousy. <laughs> Let me have that envelope. He recognized these as coming from one of your wigs. Yes, it could come from one of them. Can you tell which one? I might. Here we are. What did you find? Well, right here I have... <laughs> I didn't think there were three of you. <laughs> well, according to my book, I made one for a new customer, a man by the name of Frank Galloway, 724 West 41st Street. And, oh, yeah, some time ago, I made one for an opera singer by the name of Lombardi. Now, those hairs could come from either of them. Is that all? Yes. Very few people want gray wigs, much less gray hair, except in special cases. Well, thank you. I may need you later. Oh, oh, Commissioner, I have some other mustaches I think would suit your face better than that one. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. No, if I want one, I, I think I'll get it in the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Goodbye. Go on, go on, read it. Read it and weep. That's a fine bunch of publicity to throw at anybody. Look, Thatch, election is coming on, and I need a conviction in a big case like this if I'm going to stay district attorney of this burg. I know you do, Bill, but I've got to have somebody to convict first. Do you mind? What about Digberry? We've got enough on him right now to send him to the chair. I cannot understand why you let that fellow go. Why did you? Because I don't think he did it, that's why. He doesn't think he did it. He doesn't think he did it. Look, Thatch, it's an open and shut case. He got mixed up with it, spent money on it, probably fell madly in love with her, and finally she threw him down, so he shot her. It's as simple as that. That's Formula 146A in the bottom drawer, but it doesn't fit this case. Why not? Because he's not the type, even if she was. Yes? Madam Felitz's manager is here and wants to see the commissioner. All right. Send him in. There's a lot more to this case than meets the eye, Bill. Then I must be blind, because I can't see it. 
Commissioner, uh, I just read about Madame in the papers. Why, what happened? Who did it and why? What happened? Who did it and why? We don't know yet. Oh, now, come on. Oh, back Captain back. Walters, this is District Attorney Doherty. Captain Walters is Madame Pulitzer's manager. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Why, Mr. Doherty, this is terrible. You imagine the shock to me. I, I thought she was on her way to South America. So did everyone else except this Digberry. Digberry? Digberry? I wonder. Why, certainly, Digberry. It's a cinch. Oh, take it easy, will you? Keep your shirt on. Oh, facts. Sometimes you make me sore. Keep your shirt on of all the stupid idiotic crap. Commissioner, I'd like to offer a thousand dollars reward for the arrest of the murderer. That's your privilege, Captain Walters. Will you take charge of it? Certainly. Yes? The report on those two names Wilkins give you. Lombardi's out of town, and there's no such person as Frank Galloway at 724 West 41st Street, because there's no such address. That number would be in the middle of the Hudson River. I thought so. Thanks. Yes, sir. Get me Wilkins on the phone. Here you are, Commissioner. Thank you. Take care of this, Tony. Oh, uh, would you write your address on here for me, Captain Walters? Why, certainly. In case I should uh, want to get in touch with you. Just a minute, please. Wilkins. Hello, Mr. Wilkins. This is Commissioner Colt. Uh, there's no such address as uh, 724 West 41st Street. You sure you gave it to us correctly? Oh, you are sure. What does this man Galloway look like? Do you think you'd recognize him if you saw him again? I see. I wish you'd come to my office at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And we have several people here I want you to look at. Thank you very much, Mr. Wilkins. Goodbye. Here you are, Commissioner. Oh, thank you. You'll file that, will you, Tony? Oh, you won't be leaving town for a while yet, will you, uh, Captain Walters? Oh, no, no, not until this is settled anyway. It's fine. Oh, by the way, where did you uh, first meet Madame Polizzi? In Paris, just before the war started. She was in a jam over her passports and credentials. She's Hungarian by birth, you know. Oh, yes, I know. I had some very influential friends over there, and I straightened things out for her. Very nice of you. I've been handling her affairs ever since. You're an American, aren't you? Why, yes, of course. I was uh, wondering about the accent. Oh, may I ask what the captain is for? I went over to uh, France for the fighting 69th in the last war, and uh, I stayed there for 20 years. Oh, the fighting 69th. Great outfit, that. Yes, it is. I know uh, Colonel Donovan well. Is that so? Yes. In fact, uh, Wild Bill and I were altar boys together. By the way, Commissioner, I'd like to go over to Madame's apartment and check things over, if I may. Last week, she took one of her largest insurance policies out of a deposit box, and I'd like to find it. I think that would be all right. Tony, telephone the office in charge. It'll be all right to admit Captain Walters. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Is there uh, anything else you want of me? No, no, that'll be all. Well, goodbye, and uh, I'll be standing by for your call. Goodbye. Well, anyway, they got him. Have Doherty follow that through. Yes, sir. Send Lombardi in. Right. Take him in. Come on, come on, you. Come on, the what? Always come on, come on. Will Lombardi no want you come on? Lombardi wants you to sleep. Come on, get up on your feet. Where's it going now? I don't like it, this pushing around all the time. Shut up. There he is, Commissioner. How'd I do? Who's the you? I don't see you before, do I? Shut up. That's all he knows. <laughs> shut up. Oh, come on. That's all I hear. Shut up. Come on. Come on. Shut up. You shut up. Sit down, Lombardi. Huh? Sit down. <laughs> You're a gentleman. You see? The gentleman says, sit down, Lombardi. Not the Go home. Go home. Where are you going? Uh, 
Where did you find it? In an alley back at 28th Street. He had this on him when we picked him up. One shell has been fired. Yeah. Is this yours, Lombardi? Yes, I think so. What were you doing with it? I shot by myself. But I think so I missed. Where were you night before last? I don't know. Well, were you anywhere near 64th Street last night? I don't know. Now think, where were you? How do I know where I was last night or last before night? <laughs> I don't even know where I was now. <laughs> Lock him up till he finds out where he is. Come on. Why don't you go home? Here we go again. Come on to shut up. To shut up. To come on. Hello, Mr. Abbott. Have you found out who did it yet? No. But Commissioner Cope wants you here at 9 tomorrow morning. He thinks Wilkins will be able to identify the murder. Wilkins? Oh, I remember. The gray hair. All right, I'll be there. Goodbye. Not much of a marksman. Took two shots this time. You think the same person killed Madame Polizza? Looks like a 32. Same caliber as the other one. We have a motive for this one. He was taking no chances on Wilkins identifying him. Now look, Thatch. You kill this never would have happened. Oh, Bill Digbury had nothing to do with it. I can name you at least three others who might have done it. Who, for instance? Well, her husband. They didn't get along. We'll find out more about him when he gets here tomorrow. And that Lombardi, he's crazy enough to have done it even when he's sober. That Captain Walters might have a motive. To say nothing of the mysterious Frank Galloway, whom we haven't been able to find yet. You dig up anything that might help, Tom? No, not a thing, Commissioner. Well, keep trying. Commissioner, look at this. The missing part of Digbury's picture. Hmm. This definitely ties in with Madame Felice's apartment. It means that Wilkins was there at one time or another. There's your motive. Where? In fact, I can think of two motives right now. First, jealousy of Digberry over Wilkins' association with Felice. Or second, 
Digberry thought that Wilkins killed her and decided to avenge it. Well, it sounds possible, Bill, but not probable. Thatch, if you don't arrest Digberry now, I'll have my own men do it. All right, I'll make a deal with you. If I don't break this case by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, you can arrest Digberry at 10. It's a bet. I hope he doesn't decide to kill somebody else before then. Well, if he does, you'll probably find a motive for that, too. Well, you can laugh if you want to. But I think we ought to give his apartment a good going over. All right, if it'll make you sleep any better, we'll go over there now. Come on. Come over here, Eight Ball. Uh, yes, sir, Captain. Were you on duty the night of the murder? Yes, sir. Did you see Mr. Digberry that night? Yes, sir. Four or five times. What was he doing? Oh, he was acting awful funny. He just kept popping in and out of the ladies' apartment all evening. Popping in and out? Yes, sir. Just popping in and out. Did you hear any shots? No, sir. Sure didn't. Get his name, Tony. Right. What's your name? Uh, Nicodemus J. Brown. You can most always get me right here. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. I'll be on. Yes, sir. I don't see anything in here, Bill. You haven't looked in the drawers yet. Well, you look through them. Maybe you can find something. Okay. the missing insurance policy. Signed over to Digberry, too. $20,000. That gives him another motive. Yes, and that's the first one I can't dispute. I'll admit it looks bad. Commissioner, look here. caliber, too. Well, now will you arrest Digberry? I still have until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, do you mind? Where did you get this? From Nina. What for? Well, you remember my thousand dollars? Yes. Well, I loaned it to her. And she insisted I keep that as security. Why should she borrow a thousand dollars from you? She was a very wealthy woman. That's what everyone thought, but she wasn't. In fact, she was nearly broke. That's why she went into hiding here after the opera season. She couldn't afford to go away like she used to, and she also couldn't afford to have the truth known. It would have hurt her career. And you are the only one who knew where she was? Yes. Yeah. Is this yours? I know. We found it right here in this drawer. You did? Mm -hmm. That's funny. I, I never saw it before in my life. Oh, come on. That's for wasting time. I insist you put this man under arrest at once. Under arrest? Yes. Well, you can't do that. My wife and daughters are coming in at 11.48 tomorrow morning. I've got to meet them at the station. You're going to be much too busy at that time. Come on. Now, wait a minute. Mr. Where Digberry. Are you? What suit were you wearing at the time of the murder? Suit? Well, I, I don't know now. Wait a minute, let me think. Was it this one? Uh, no, no, my light one. Yes, that was it. Where is it? Well, it's in there. Get it, Tony. Right. And you never saw this before? I give you my word, I never saw it in my life. Is this it? Yes. What's that? Let's got? go. My coat, Bill. Right. Thank you. The elevator boy says he saw you go in Felicia's apartment wearing that suit. Is that right? Yes, I did. 
Our chemists have found traces of Madame Polizia's face powder on the lapels and shoulders of the coat. That happened when you moved the body from where it fell. But I tell you, I... Stop didn't... interrupting! This gun has been tested and proven to be the same gun used in both cases. And it was found in your apartment. But it isn't mine. So the motive for your actions is perfectly clear. This policy would bring you $20,000 at Madame Polizia's death. This is the missing policy, isn't it, Captain Walters? Why, why, yes, that's it. Thank you. So you see, Mr. Digberry, I have enough evidence to convict you of both crimes. Just a minute, Bill. I'd like to ask Mr. Digberry a few questions, if you don't mind. Why, certainly. Go ahead. Mr. Digberry, are you sure this is your suit? Why, yes, certainly. Would you swear to it? Yes, that's where I bought it. Take a good look. That's funny. No, this isn't my suit. That button was off my suit. I was waiting for my wife to come home and sew it on. Of course it isn't your suit. And uh, this isn't one of your wigs either, is it? No, indeed, not with that Wilkins label in it. Glenn? Yes, sir. And the gun wasn't yours? Absolutely not. You see, Bill, this wig makes it very clear why the upper part of Digberry's picture was found in Wilkins' shop. Wilkins was using it to match Digberry's head for Galloway. Yes, but what about the gun that was found in Digberry's apartment? Well, this is the way I see it. This Galloway, perfectly disguised as Digberry, with the wig, the suit, and the hat, killed Madame Polizia after first getting Digberry out of the house with a fake telephone call. Now, we have scientifically established the fact that her death occurred no later than 7 o'clock, even though the watch on her wrist, the one with the broken crystal, stopped at 8.10. See, this murderer was a very clever man. He set this watch forward more than an hour, and then he stopped it by depressing the mainspring. This, of course, was done to ruin Digberry's alibi because Digberry could prove that he was not in the apartment at 7 o'clock when the murder actually occurred. Then, knowing that Wilkins was the only one who could identify him, Galloway disposed of Wilkins. And then he planted the murder gun in Digberry's apartment. Then Galloway went to his own apartment, his real address, not the one in the Hudson River, and he wrapped the coat, the suit, and the wig up in a package, planning, of course, to dispose of them. But he delayed just a little too long. He felt quite safe, you see. Now, this proves conclusively that Galloway was the murderer. Doesn't that sound plausible to you? Mm, well, yes, in a way. What do you think about it, Captain Wallace? Why, uh, yes, uh, I think so. Well, you ought to know, Galloway. Frank Galloway. <laughs> well, uh, uh, what is this? Uh, a, a joke? Far from it. Why, well, you can't, uh, you can't prove anything so ridiculous. A moment ago, it sounded quite plausible to you. But if you're still not convinced, I'll give you a few more facts. We can prove that you bought the hat and the suit. The wig speaks for itself. And as for the gun, Paris police informed me that it was purchased by you in Paris. They very readily identified your fingerprints, which you so kindly gave me when you wrote out your address. Why, 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 this is preposterous. Why should I kill Madame Felitza? Because you'd stolen her money. And you knew she'd canceled her trip to South America and was having you investigated. Yes, that's why she borrowed my thousand dollars. Exactly. It's too bad for you you didn't destroy the wig and the suit. It might have been a perfect crime. Have you been following me, Bill? Well, all right, sure. All right, Flynn. Incidentally, I knew you never belonged to the Fighting 69th. We didn't have any rats in that outfit. Come on. Well, this is very confusing. We still have a blackmail charge against you, Mr. Digberry. But since you're identifying the, uh, the gray hairs was the most important step in solving this crime, I think the reward should be yours. You've made yourself $1,000. Well, thanks. That makes you even. And if you can legally collect the insurance policy, you'll be $20,000 ahead. 
In that case, I think you'll have to tell your wife. My wife? My wife? Oh, dear, dear, the tray. 11.38. I'll never be able to make Grand Central Station in 10 minutes. You'll make it all right. Tony, put him in my car. Right. Come along, Oh, Everett. thanks. You've saved my life. Tell Flanagan to use both sirens. See, Bill, what happens when a button comes off? <laughs>